Good evening and welcome to Cult of Contempt. The show will begin shortly as soon as we get transmission to space. In the meantime, watch the... Now there's been a shortage of freaks lately. The following program is for adults only. Parental guidance is suggested. In other words, we're gonna be fucking swearing and talking about fucked up shit. Get your goddamn kids away! Leave me alone! Ladies and gentlemen, boils and ghouls, welcome to Dr. Zavir's Freak Show! You want a summer blockbuster? This Friday, come check out the band Jersey is talking about. The Strip Down Ace. It's the party band taking Jersey by storm. Next stop, Delta Corner, Bergen County's coolest pub. The Aces provide the music, and Kilda Corner will provide awesome food and libations. That's this Friday, July 19th at Kilda Corner, Lafayette Ave and Hawthorne, just below Billy's Midway. If you do the arcade, do it the Kilda Corner way. One drink before and dinner after. That's Kelty Corner of the Strip Down Aces. This summer is heating up. And now, Cult of Contempt Podcast presents Out and About with BK. That's right. We sent BK to talk to people. BK. Previously on Out and About. So I'm kind of walking around Hamilton. Um, uh, somewhere in South Jersey. I don't know much. If your plans go awry, always have a backup. That's three dips with the chips. No charge. Boring! So, uh, this is Marvel Legends. This is a line of figures, ultra articulated, um, museum quality. And Terry was part of a community that uses the action figures to actually create dioramas and art. And there's a whole community that actually makes parts for, to help people with it. My spider senses are starting to tingle. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Does whatever a spider can Spins a web in his size Catch these just like flies Look, Look out. out There goes Spider-Man Next time on Out and About, beautiful bartender singing. Won't you want somebody to love? And what the hell is up with Hoboken?
Hi, fellas. How are you? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so, so uh, what are you calling yourself, Mr. Zombie? What am I calling myself? Mr. What, Zombie. What do you mean to call Zombie. yourself? I'm sorry. What is your name, sir? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Jim Cook. Jim, Jim Cook. Good to meet you, Jim. I'm Harlow the Zombie. Harlow the Zombie. Harlow, Harlow the Zombie. Harlow. 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 Uh, just, just to be sure for yes. the audience, did, right. did you have some brains before you came in, or is Phil in trouble? Well, you know, well, Phil. and do you usually gravitate to the smartest or the dumbest person? And we have a flood warning. Flash wow. flood warning. Yeah. Flash flood warning. Beware, beware. beware. We're in space. <laughs> we don't, we don't worry, worry about flash floods. In I'm space. looking at Earth right now, and it looks like it's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we're like in space with one zombie. You know that movie's not going to end well. Yeah, and no, Russia flew him up there. You know what? I, I think you're good, Phil. We're good. I'm just, I'm just. Well, I, I don't know about these two, but I think you're good. I'm good. I'm <laughs> just saying, you should be safe. I'm safe. You know, I can kind of smell it. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of have that. Yeah, I kind of got like a sixth sense, uh, like, like a, like a peaty tingle. You guys are fun. But, you know, I think he wants the biggest brains. Mine is just big because I'm fat. <laughs> Paul's a super genius, but only uses ten percent of his brain. I don't think that's how brains work. I don't think they get fat. I'm just so saying. So you cut open Jim's brain, there'd be like that nice marbling you get with a steak. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good eating, man. That's where the flavor is. <laughs> the fat is where the flavor is, ladies and gentlemen. Very, you gotta cook true. it right, or not cook it, as the case may be. So when did you start doing this makeup, man? What makeup? What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> ah, ah, no, you shouldn't. Well, we're here to discuss the zombies being a brand new protected class. And yeah. Arlo here represents the Zombies Union. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate you having me on, too. As a representative of the undead, I, uh, you know, I, I think we need a voice because not a lot of us have it. So, uh, you know, yeah, voice class nice. uh, oxes are the first to deteriorate. As you can tell, I can't even speak. So, that's <laughs> how that works. And this is a rare opportunity. We can ask him about some zombie properties and ask if they're bullshit or not. Ah, very good. Very all right, good. all right. Warm bodies, first off. Warm bodies. Warm bodies. The Romeo and Juliet of uh, zombie movies. Yes? Yeah. Uh, total bullshit. Yeah. 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 Total bullshit, yeah. You know. You don't feel the memory of the, of the brain you eat. You don't, you don't have any kind of recollection or, or anything absorbed into you. It's not osmosis. You know, it's it's not like if you eat a hamburger, you don't all of a sudden want to go out to a field and eat grass. That's not how that works. Right. As well, it's right. just it, it's it's all it's all Hollywood. It's all Hollywood hype, and uh, <laughs> they want they want to uh, they want to exploit us. Is what it is. They want they want to exploit the zombie and uh, make their money, and they they'll, they'll take certain liberties. Let's say. Okay. So, so like making them run. <laughs> like making them run in. Uh, well, well, you know what? A, a fresher zombie. Can move a little bit faster. Than, oh, sorry, uh, fresher zombie can move a little bit faster than than one that has been decaying for some time. That's so why the Ramiro one. It just started happening. That's why they moved. That's why they moved. Well, I mean, the Ramiro remake. Well, that was the documentary the that that OG Night of Living Dead, right? Isn't that the real deal? Oh yeah, that's that's <laughs> the real deal, right? Night of Living Dead. Night of Living Dead. What? Well, uh, uh, being the first uh, zombie movie, I believe they did use real zombies in that. So that was a, uh, that, that, I mean, that was more realistic than you'll get uh, nowadays with all the CGI and uh, so on. So, right. Yes. Do you get like a SAG card? A, uh, is, there well, a, is there like a ZAG, like zombie actors? They're, they're, well, you know what? Um, SAG, SAG is, is mostly for... Uh, Actors who are uh, currently breathing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. be, being that we are, are kind of, we're kind of like a liability um, and and, uh, mm -hmm. and and free labor, if you will, for, for Hollywood. So, um, no, there's no there's no sad card. There's no union. You know, if if we get if we get shot, if they, they shoot our leg off, you know, too bad. Next zombie, bring him in. Wheel them in. Let me ask you this. How do I put together my own army of the undead? Because I've been asking myself this question my whole life. Uh, well, you know, um, there is there's one thing that Hollywood got right, and uh, that is, um, you know, the uh, the Ash and the Living... Uh, nice. Ash and the Living Dead and the, and the, and the Dead. Um, uh, That's the a good Deadites, one. Uh, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, the Necronomicon. If you can get your hands mm. on a good Necronomicon, you know, not the cheap knockoffs, right. good Necronomicon. Right. 
you might you might be able to summon some uh, some of us up and, and kind of lead with you. All you gotta do is the real McCoy. Yeah. You just gotta recite the name of three Star Wars action figures: Klaatu, Barada, and Nikko. Oh, nice. That's very true. That's yeah. Very, very true. Which were also the words from Day. No, the Day of the Earth. Day of the Earth stood no, still. That's right. Like the, orig- the original, not the all connected. Keanu Reeves oh, bullshit. I always forgot about that one with the King of Keanu Reeves. I remember they made it. I don't think I ever watched. Yeah, that it. one was such a far departure from. Do, the do not watch it. It's it's, yeah. it's it's not. It's a waste of time. I've never. And I like Keanu Reeves. Yeah, I'm, I do I'm too. a Keanu Reeves. Fan. Yeah, but that one was not a good one. Yeah. Unfortunately. I like the movies he's in. I don't know necessarily know that he's a good actor. Cool. You just think he's being Keanu? He's just kind of wooden, but, uh, you know, he's just kind of like the everyday kind of schlub guy in the IT department that you're like, eh, I kind of like that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's actors and there's movie stars. I think Keanu falls into the movie star, like Harrison Ford. Like, right. they're a name, people like them. And it's them yeah, you playing. Yeah, hire them usually because they have kind of a personality like a, that would fit like, within the like confines. A, like of that's kind of like a Tom Hanks too. Like no, Tom he Hanks has range. Is, that. Yeah, would you? Yeah, but I don't think range. anybody would ever cast Tom Hanks as a serial rapist. I think that's coming. Kind of like, <laughs> please do. That would be <laughs> actually fun. Wasn't crazy. he a serial <laughs> rapist in his very first movie? He knows when you're home. He knows when you're not home. I, mean, I don't know. Everybody. I he was a racist, but he was a murderer. Everybody always movie. plays a heel, like in their first, like the the yeah. whole like uh, Jeff right, Goldblum has... shows up in like Death Wish and like right. Danny Glover. Yeah. Like everybody always plays like a heavy. Yeah, Danny Glover was in Witness, right? As like a thug. Danny Glover was a bad dude in Witness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, um, Jim, James Gandolfini in True Romance. Well, Jim Gandolfini was always a bad motherfucker. Yeah, but he also just played like a thug. And if it's if like, you're not a slug. You're a murder victim in a horror movie like Johnny Depp, uh, the chick from Friends. Uh, there's a whole list of those guys. It's almost a rite of passage to do horror first. It's the easiest work to get, I guess. I, I think know. it's easy to break in. I think I like horror because it kind of breaks the rules, you know? It, knows it doesn't have to follow rules, and it doesn't have to be nice, which is also good. So you can do a lot more with that creatively, I think, but uh, that comes with good and bad. I mean, if you like trauma videos, you know, that's cool, but like... There's some like serious horror too, you know. There's some. There's some. Really what, what do you consider serious horror? But like, like the ghost stories that have a, like, all this plot and juxtaposition and. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, that Stephen King stuff is really good. I okay. always like those movies. Um, Suspiria. Yeah, there you like go. The old Stogie Suspiria to me was always like like a classy horror movie. Yeah, yeah. There's. I always found myself most scared by. The movies where the monster is something that exists in real life, but is superhuman somehow, like you know, like Jaws, for example, or uh, uh, Alligator, or a zombie, or a zombie. Or yeah, zombie. Just, exactly. yeah. So, um, so, so, does the community are they hot for Andrew Lincoln, or are they like fuck mm-hmm. that guy? Well, I mean, he's he's not on the show anymore. That's Andrew, what I heard. I don't know. I stopped watching. Andrew Lincoln is is no longer on The Walking Dead, at least not for now. I have a theory to what happened, but... I tell t- you what, the, the zombie community, though, they, they do love Norman Reedus. Okay. Norman yeah. Reedus is a friend to the zombies. <laughs> nice. nice. And I'm, I'm going to say that live right now. Norman Reedus, although a badass on screen, friend to the zombie community. Nice. It's nice. I'm, just say, yeah. it's, uh, I'm, I'm outing him, and I apologize. I'm, I'm sorry, Norman, but the truth had to be told. How do you get over the human rights issue of eating live human brains? The human rights issue? <laughs> I have no problem with the human rights issue because I'm not human. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, fuck them, right? Right. Listen, it's, 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 it's like if you had, you know, if the chickens all of a sudden uh, rose up and said, you know, chicken rights, you, you wouldn't give a shit, you need your wings. If a chicken was talking to me and saying chicken rights, I'd be pretty fucking freaked out. Well, and that's, and that's why most zombies don't talk. I would probably hang out with them too, maybe train them and do my bidding. You train the chicken? If you can. What would you train your chicken to do? Pick locks. I don't know. With his beak? Bob Banks. <laughs> Just pecking at, at the locks with If they beak. can talk, I think they can pick a lock. I don't know. There's quite a, quite a jump from picking a lock to talk. Yeah, don't you need, like, opposable thumbs to pick a lock? Maybe no, you, you just get peck at it. Yeah, just peck at Maybe it. Maybe you can just get them down like an air that shaft. That's not going to fit into the intricacy. You want to try that again? You want to use my voice box? Yes. Let's switch. You can probably train better animals than chickens to do your bit. <laughs> That's true. But if all you I got is talking chickens, you got to get work with what you got. You ever see Willard? 
Oh, oh, rats. oh it's a that's rat. a great one. Yeah. Speaking speaking of actor versus uh, versus movie star, uh, Crispin Glover. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's an actor. Yeah. He's an actor. He's he's a little little off the deep end though. So great. You know, I thought the Charlie's Angels movies were kind of dumb, but he was fucking great. He's that bad guy. <laughs> yeah, he plays this crazy villain that's obsessed with Drew Barrymore, and he like rips off her hair and smells it. And then in one of the sequels, they kind of have a thing for each other. It's weird. Did you ever see him on Letterman back in the day? Like back in the Back to the Future days, or uh, I think it was after Back to the Future. I think it was like the '90s. He came on. He was wearing fucking bell bottoms and like platform shoes, and he was all fucking like real weird. And then he's like, "Oh, I could throw a karate kick," and he like turns and throws a karate kick towards Letterman that comes like a foot away from his face. Oh, shit. And Letterman goes to a commercial and when he comes back, Crispin Glover is not there. Ah! <laughs> he is gone. Nice. He All right. I've had enough of that. <laughs> Next, I heard Letterman was a dick. But, but Letterman sometimes is in on shit too. Mm -hmm. Like, with uh, that whole thing, uh, the guy who played Johnny Cash, Hakeem Phoenix, uh, yeah, yeah, and he like yeah. went off the deep end. They're like, "Oh, I'm gonna be a rapper," and he just did all these like weird appearances on all these talk shows where he was just being like a dick. Oh yeah, like Letterman knew it was like a like a bit. It was it was a bit. Yeah, like I think if Letterman didn't know, Letterman would have been pissed. Like you have to tell somebody like that if you're gonna do something fucking stupid on their show. Yeah. Do you think Do you think Letterman knew that Drew Barrymore was gonna flash him on his desk for his birthday? No. Did you see not. that one? Yeah. yeah. That that keeps coming up. I saw it. She was pushing on Stern. I think talking about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That clip keeps getting life. Like they never. People thought they would do this shit and never thought like anybody was gonna tape it. Play it twenty years yeah. later. Do you see her boobs or no? You did. don't see no. Because she's. She's got her back to the camera and is on, actually standing on yeah. his desk, and just like turns to towards him, back to the camera, just goes Pshink! and you see let him do the, the his famous eye. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Drew Barrymore is the craziest thing. Actually. She's this cute little kid in ET. Then all of a sudden, like by the late '80s, early '90s, there's this piece of shit movie that was on HBO all the time called Poison Ivy. Did you ever see her? I saw Poison Ivy. She's such a whore in it. She, but she is a little, after she's, that's when I started coming of age and started feeling you start, you start things where I never something. felt before. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so like I had the thing for her, but at that time she was a fucking train wreck, and nobody wanted to hire her. But I think was it the Sandler movie? I know you there? wanted to hire her. Oh, oh I would have hired her for all kinds of things. Voiceover work. <laughs> voiceover work, for instance. <laughs> Topless voiceover work. Or washing your car. <laughs> Bikini car wash. Hell yeah. You're surprisingly quiet today. I don't know. So it was like a a rough week at the office, as they say. At the spy company. At the spy company? Yeah, at the spy company. <laughs> I'm a government shill! That's my, uh, that's my new catchphrase. I'm a government shill! Nice. I just yell it randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I started, do you do it while you're committing crimes? Like, you just steal candy from a baby? <laughs> I'm a government shill! <laughs> I started doing this thing at work where I just go... <laughs> like Eddie Murphy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Ricky Ricardo, one of the two. Yeah, it is kind of like somewhere between... Um, I don't know, I've, I have been surprisingly quiet. I'll be loud from now on. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did? See, no, 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 I just, now look what you did, you little jerk. <laughs> I'm the, uh, you know, I'm the guy who kind of makes things work. So if the pilot lights out on, on Paul, I got to turn on the pilot. You got to stoke him a little bit. Nah, mm. just if tired. Phil needs to be put in his place, we just go whack. Yeah, no, guys. nobody gets backhanded. <laughs> this isn't the backseat of my dad's car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit whoever's not crying. <laughs> Watching hands. <laughs> Uh, My mom used to say, I'm going to hit both of you. That way I know I got the right one. Oh, yeah. Duck and weave, kids. Duck and weave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're the only one in this room who's actually met my mother. Would you be afraid of my mother in the 70s? Would I be afraid of her in the 70s? Yes. Because oh. she can't move now, but I well, mean, you met say. her. And... Yeah, I'd be afraid of her in the 70s. <laughs> I would be afraid of her when I met her, like, what was it, 10 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> the heck with the 70s, huh? <laughs> I'm surprised you made it out alive, actually, quite frankly. Christ. My thing is this. You Stars know, are on the inside. If ah. you're going to be a parent, wouldn't you be extra nice to your kid? Because you know when you're old as fuck, there are going to be ones making decisions for your ass. 
Like, are you gonna give a fuck now because she beat the shit out of you with a wooden spoon? Like, stick her in a home, you know? I'm um, saying, like, you're saying a lot of things right now that I'm not gonna discuss on air. <laughs> um, I'm but, just saying, like, nobody ever thinks about that, you know? But, you're but the talking, problem is the other way. Like, you're talking short lived, man. You know, sooner no, or later, I get what you're saying. Your ass. And there's a degree of, I'm not as close as my mother as other siblings are. Right. Um, she's there, I'm here. Right, right. But I, I include her in shit. I brought her to our poker game. Right. I'm just um, saying, like, when and, you're and my fun. household allows zombies in our poker game. Nice. I appreciate. That. I feel uh, like when your parents get old, just let zombies on them. Just let them. Just let them die with dignity. That's dignity. Get me alive. <laughs> I don't know. A good noble death. Uh, electrocution. Electrocution. I say a life. Viking funeral while they're still alive. <laughs> while they're still alive. <laughs> hey guys, so you see a lot of fire swimming ashore? <laughs> <laughs> I got you a boat. <laughs> is that is that what you if you if you die you you want a Viking funeral? Do you, do you want us to like shoot bows? Oh, I'm never gonna die. I'm I'm immortal. I haven't even aged. <laughs> You'll at least years. fake your death once. Do you want a Viking funeral for one of your fake once. deaths? <laughs> he's, he's faked his death many, many times already. Yeah. Just ask him about ages one of the ones he's ages. done. <laughs> ages and ages and ages. <laughs> it would be funny if you were in one. That's like that, there's that meme that goes around with, like, Nicol, there's a guy that looked like Nicolas Cage back in, like, yes. the 1800s yes. or something. Uh, Nicolas yeah. Cage is a timeless, <laughs> immortal fucking being. That would be fucking awesome. If there's anybody I that wants to be lot. immortal, you want Nicolas Cage to be yeah, immortal? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I want to see how bad his tax situation gets in like 200 years. <laughs> like it was so bad now, Johnny Depp had to like bail him out. Like I don't know, 12 years ago, like it's got to be so much worse. Like he bought a fucking T-Rex skeleton and like all this <laughs> shit. Actual T-Rex skeleton or like a replica? That's not the only thing. No, like a real one. Made. He bought a house in New Orleans. That the owner of the house back in the days of slavery would torture her slaves in the attic. Oh my god! And chain the the kitchen slaves to the to to like the stove. Oh my god! So this woman did all these horrible things. They finally found out about it. Nobody had ever seen anything like it before. The house was supposedly cursed. And then here comes Nicholas Cage with a big fat check. Oh my god, his house. career went. That's when he had his tax problems. That's when he had his divorce. Everything went downhill. Oh, because he bought a cursed house? Because he bought a cursed house. Or at least that's what the woman on the tour who asked me for a $20 zip. <laughs> so, yeah, we were, we were in New Orleans with, uh, for Ali's 40th. Uh, you got fleeced. No, I, I, I gave her 20 bucks because she was awesome. Oh, that's cool. She kind of had, like, she was like a chubby Stevie Nicks. Huh. And so he wouldn't get cursed. That was basically the other thing. Yeah. Thing. I'm going to give you 20, just don't put any curses on me. Yeah, really? Like, no, she talked about uh, Marie Laveau. Uh, look her up on the internet, guys. A very interesting woman. Oh, yeah. Voodoo priestess. A lot of voodoo. But she was just the con woman who did good for the poor. Community. I say voo don't. <laughs> <laughs> voodoo? I voodoo. agree. Circle gets the square. Very nice. <laughs> so, um... Uh, so I hear um, a guy freaked out in a Long Island bagel shop and got the crap beat out of him. Bagel boss. Yeah. Bagel boss. So, like, I saw an interview on, like, a local news channel of the guy, and I felt bad for the guy because he obviously probably has bipolar and some, and some self-esteem issues. There's no reason for you to just fucking, like, haul off and start screaming at people in a bagel shop. I'm sorry. I didn't see the whole clip. Did he, did he instigate the whole thing? Yeah. Or did they start with him? He's he's he felt like short. the girl was was like mocking him because she was like laughing, I guess, while she was like making a sandwich. I don't know. I, I think if the people making my sandwich are smiling, that's usually a good thing. Like, right? I don't they're know. Good if they're smiling when they're making the sandwich. That means they're, they're, they're sticking the they're messing in it. things in it. Yeah. Not always. I mean, I don't know. That's how they're smiling. Happy people working sometimes. I don't know. I. But no, I freaked he, out and mooned a guy at a Moe's once. <laughs> Why did you moon a guy at a Moe's? Uh, just, just, was not good for Just me. for the alliteration? Or? <laughs> um, no, no, no. So, all right, so, so I'm there, like, like Aaron, Allie, and this is, this is my Persephone days. Okay. And I asked this guy, it, the guy's behind the counter, they were, like, dumb. And um, Allie, they got Allie's order wrong. And then they got my order wrong, and I said again, and I just turned to the guy, I'm like, these guys aren't listening. And the guy's like, well, that's the way you're talking to them. And I was like, I only, like, raised my voice because we asked him the same thing three times. 
And I was like, what the hell is your problem, buddy? And then and then we started going at it, and I was like, you know what? Fuck you, fuck Moe's, and I just mooned him and walked out. And then as I was pulling my pants up and I was heading out the door, a cop car went by. No idea that I had just mooned an entire Moe's. <laughs> Bipolar is a funny thing. <laughs> but th this guy is known for having rants like that, and he's a really short guy, and I think he was just projecting on the women that were in there, but apparently... So a bunch of women had rejected him because of his height on dating sites, and then he went in there, and the girl was laughing, probably at something her coworker had said, and he just exploded on her. That's how you become a supervillain. <laughs> the shortest straw. <laughs> <laughs> that one well, that's a good final thing. Because he's short. I, he's I short. see you did it. <laughs> But you know what? If what I would do is, why don't you go to like, you know, like a little people convention? Now you're the tall guy. Turn a negative into a positive. Then you can probably get any girl you want. How many any how little many, girl, uh, little three person conventions do you know about? There's got to be at least a couple. There's uh, the Lollipop Guild. They meet in uh, San Diego. <laughs> well, all those little people have shows now on TLC. The Little Women of Atlanta. That's that's right. very true, but you don't usually have a convention. Uh, at least I've never seen Midget it. Fest. All right. right. <laughs> never have I ever watched midget porn. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> I was. I totally had to know. I've made midget porn. <laughs> Well, it makes her cock look huge. And I'm not lying. And then, oh, the little, <laughs> little hands? It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, they can just arms. suck their heart <laughs> fist right. in your oh, ass. Oh, my God. Prostate <laughs> cleanse, man. Or massage. <laughs> yeah, I like when they just grab it inside. They just reach in, full fist. Just start <laughs> pulling out shit. <laughs> <laughs> the keys. That's, from the that's how I got my colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> a midget with a GoPro just stuck his hand in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> who's that, um, who's that karate uh, short little person that, like, I don't know, made cameos on TV, and I guess he was on Stern for a while, and he was just, like, beat up. He would... Hank the Angry Drunken Dwarf? <laughs> no, 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 that's... That Beetle guy juice. was a train wreck. Beetle no, there's this guy, he's, like, in shape, and he's, like, and he's like a karate... He was in an episode of Scrubs. Oh, I think... I kind of... No idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry. I need to do my research. I don't watch actually. Scrubs. I don't watch Friends. I don't watch Seinfeld. None of it. I hate Friends. It's a racist show. I hate it. They had they had like they had uh, Alicia Tyler on there. Who? Exactly. Yeah, she's on Archer. She does a uh, who? Oh, yeah. Wait. Lana's voice. Not Archer. Archer's awesome. Uh, no, Archer's not racist. The girl from fucking the Alicia well, Tyler anyway. was on Friends was is on Archer now. That's right. I, I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm just oh. messing with you. <laughs> I, I always you're thought doing an owl impression. Who? Exactly. <laughs> I always thought Friends was like the just yuppie fucking white people writing about yuppie white people shit. Ugh, like, uh, I can't people. imagine they had much of another point of perspective. Like they're probably like privileged people that fucking they that they thought that was life. Like I don't know. The people who were writing it, you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's nothing really like, gritty. Like, did anybody ever get raped and stuff? Or not the part? people writing it necessarily as the the people who came up with the concept for the show. Right. Like, the writers, that's their job. They just write whatever shit they're supposed to. This week on a very special Friends, <laughs> Phoebe has an abortion. <laughs> yeah, right? They never did anything no, like that. No, nope. very... Like, no, there was never anybody, raped, anybody oh, abortion. I think I got the clap, but nothing. But if they all lived in Central Park, eventually they're going to get mugged, raped, or beat at some point, right? Nobody can even afford it. I think they lived in Central now. Park. It was just, that was just the name of the coffee house that they were in Central Park. Oh, yeah. but I thought their apartment was near Central Park. It might have been. I don't know. And that was the whole, like, gag. Like, how can those dumbasses afford an apartment that close to Central Park? Yeah. Right? Tom like, Selleck like, pays for it. Yeah, Tom Selleck paid for all of their apartments. In Tom Selleck? Yes. Why did Tom Selleck? Because he was in the, in the show. Oh. He was he was Courtney Cox's uh, love interest for a couple oh. seasons there. Yeah. Hey, baby. Yeah, she fucked her dad's friend. That was like the most scandalous thing that happened. That's pretty, yeah. <laughs> she was like thirty and fucked her dad's sixty-year-old friend. And it Is it like, worse oh. if you're nineteen and you fuck your dad's best friend? Uh, How old are you? Are you going from experience or are you asking for a friend? <laughs> or Just keeping people How guessing. That? Okay. <laughs> My dad had no friends. It is like a very fucking. Just 
whitewashed take on New York. Yeah, yeah. on life, really. Well, on, network, on network television, you're not going to get a whole lot of... I mean, even the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was it was kind of a wash, whitewashed version of, True. you know. I don't know. Yeah, I, th- I feel like TV was more authentic like 30 years ago. When you were like well, back when you Sanford had and Son, all that Sanford shit. Sanford and like, Son, you had, you had Jefferson's, all in the family. All Before that, you had Maude, where there was an actual what? abortion on TV. Yeah, that's right. what well, I mean. Not, they, not they the actual abortion. Yeah. 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 That would have been cool. We're going to stick this hanger in you. <laughs> no, <they don't. laughs> That's a sound bite. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be on a T-shirt. It could be a B Arthur. We're gonna stick this hanger in you. <laughs> and just a picture of a bloody hanger. Now they always like, I don't know. They never shied away from shit. I don't know when that started, where everything became like homogenized and nice. Yeah, and, like wait, it was that's not true though, point. because in the '60s and shit, like you couldn't show her belly button on fucking I Dream of Genie and shit. Like fucking, uh, uh, you she know, has like, a name. Yeah, I'm just saying, it, like, you know, that, it, it, but it got to that point. They didn't and sleep then, in the then, same bed. All the wives and husbands, sure, all yeah, yeah, the same bed. Then it came back to reality in like the like the 60s, 70s. I feel like the 70s was a gritty time, and people were just like, let's push boundaries. Right. You know, there, there was some debate on Facebook about Happy Days being a little whitewashed. But the thing is, Happy Days took place in the 50s, where the powers that be made it sure that white people lived here and black people lived here. Right. Like, so there was a lack of black people and I think the episode where Al and Fonzie go to the South you know, to fight racism was kind of the, the correction of that because by then in the show hey, time-wise Fonz, let's the go late 60s, fight racism. <laughs> it was more like I'm upset because there's People can't get served at a coffee shop. You know, because Al would overact. I don't know how into Which Al? Uh, no, no, not, not Pat Morita Al. Like okay. Al with the big nose. Right. Oh. Was, uh, I thought... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Was, that, yeah, I that was his catchphrase. Yep, yep, yep. yep, yep. was his catchphrase. Yeah, well, but they I, had... That's the thing. They had fucking Pat Morita on. Like, yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know. That's somewhat diverse. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he played a little bit of a stereotype, but... It was, it was a little stereotype. But that was his career. It was... That's what he. That's the roles he he went out for and took. I mean, is that right? No, but his nickname back then was the Hip Nip. You don't see him making a fucking documentary like bitching about it like that guy. No, Ruben well, that who? you're not gonna you're not gonna really see too many documentaries from Pat Morita. He's actually on our side now. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's, he's, is he he's, one of you? He's, he's one of us now. Right. Does he only he's, eat like he's on this, of this, fish? He's on this side of the, of the grass. What? Does he only eat brains of fish with the, with the chopstick? Yeah, he's gotten a lot better at it. You know, <laughs> he's, he's, you know, it, it was a little rough. I will tell first. you, I, I used to teach um, an adult class in Korea, English, intermediate English, and one of the things their professors used to help teach them American culture was videos of friends, which I think is very weird. Uh, yeah, I mean that's. I don't want that to be. Let's just think about it. No, I want a bunch of Koreans walking around that think they're Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great future. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, like this lost. stuff is exported, like, you know, it's really a reflection of us in a lot of ways, and it's not portraying us. Yeah, it's, it's like either the, portraying us very squeaky clean or, like, super gritty, like The Wire and shit like that, you know? I would much rather but foreigners the, think America is <laughs> like The Fucking Wire. <laughs> but, the, but, the wire but The Wire is not, it's not, you're not talking about network television, though. That's true, too. Network television has got to be very, very plain vanilla. Right. There's a few exceptions. NYP. I thought, I thought like, my experience being lower middle class, Roseanne and Malcolm in the Middle were pretty right on mm-hmm. with what my experience was. You thought you were lower middle class? Yeah. That's yeah, we... Hey. I mean, we lived in Hawk for a long time. Hmm. And, uh, Strive for greatness. So. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I am reaching for the stars. Look at us now. Reach for the stars, <laughs> and, and here you are in space. Yeah. See that? You've come next to a star. You've done it. You've accomplished your dreams. You got some. Oh yeah, my dreams is cleaning gremlin shit underneath the ship and almost getting killed. See episode thirteen. Nah. Nice. <laughs> Callbacks. Nice. I don't even think it was thirteen. I'm just making shit up. Uh, anyway, so you guys want to bitch about uh, the working class and Richard Bezos, or do, would you rather talk about? Uh, the shared universe of the uh, Lifetime Network. Yeah, the Lifetime Network is starting a shared universe. 
What does that mean a exactly? Shared well, that means like a rapist from one movie will yeah. be a rapist in another movie. <laughs> Basically, yeah, they got this girl from uh, so Sleep... They're, so they're doing the, the uh, MCU for Lifetime. Oh, oh Lifetime. Lifetime. Yes. Uh-huh. I got you. It keeps people hooked. They have got... They, they, they excited tell, Paul is about this. Yeah, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I can't wait for this. The shared universe. This is like the greatest thing ever. Your testicles now become a over. Is, uh, the mom from Family Ties involved in this shared universe? Or she not she has to be. She's in every every lifetime. I, I, don't I think that was 20 years ago. I don't Very think they hired her anymore. She hasn't come up yet, but you know who has? Is American treasure, Eric Roberts. Ah, <laughs> of course. Yes. Yeah, he, he's in the Stalked by My Doctor movies. Nice. And... In those movies, he plays a doctor that stalks people. So, okay. stalked by my doctor. Is Makes he a gynecologist or is he just like a general practitioner? Uh, you know, I don't even. I think he was a surgeon, but then he like pretends to be like, all right, now I'm a podiatrist, like with a different name, you know. But it's still fucking Eric Roberts. He's like the most recognizably crazy looking man. <laughs> and uh, they took that and they made a. Uh, there's another one called uh, Sleepwalking in Suburbia, where a girl like sleepwalks, fucks people while she's sleeping, murders a motherfucker. Uh, oh, that sounds of, like a good movie. All kinds of crazy shit. So guess who her new doctor is? Ah, Eric uh, Roberts. Okay. Boom. Sharing Tying it all together. Yeah, and then I, I hope that they they bring in like other Lifetime. Like I always see these movies, like the same fucking ten people are in all the Lifetime movies. It's right. like they sign a deal for like three, four movies, play an asshole in four movies, play a whore in four movies, victim, victim, victim. They never change the roles of what these people do. It's like, yeah, this person's great at getting fucking And, that, and that's where, where this whole thing comes in. They've been planning this for years. They have those same actors playing all these same roles because it's all interconnected. They're just actually releasing that now. Yeah, wow. it's all coming to fruition. It's all coming to fruition. The whole thing has been an, has been a, a Ponzi scheme for for like many years, and now it's all coming out. All right, so now you have Lifetime, Marvel. Right. I hear uh, Hasbro is going to have a shared universe somehow. To some GI Hasbro. Joe and GI Joe Transformers mask. Gem. They're all kind of tied together already, the cartoons, the um, the Sunbro cartoons from the 80s, because there's a reporter that's on Gem, G.I. Joe, and uh, Transformers named April. H- Hector Rodriguez, oh, okay. or Victor Rodriguez. I remember when a Cobra Commander shows up in Transformers. In Transformers, in that, yeah, in the future one, yeah. And he's like turning Transformers into people. And then at the end he goes, Cobra! And he starts coughing. But you knew who he was. Yeah, you knew who he was. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Chris Lotta, greatest voice actor ever. Anyway. Oh, I didn't even know his name. Yeah, there's also that horror movie. Uh, right, uh, the Universal that, Monsters, right? No, not, well, they were trying to do that. But there's the Insidious. Is that that's a shared universe, I think? Or uh, what's the one with the fucking Ghost Hunters? Ed and Lorraine War- uh, Warren. They were like, it's based on real people. I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of ghost movies. It's I like a newer cool. movie. They have like a couple of them. Annabelle's one of them. Oh, uh, oh I saw Annabelle okay. actually. No, um, I didn't see Annabelle. That's the new one, right? Yeah, that just yeah. Came that's out. like a big shared yeah. universe. The they wanted to do a universal one too. They tried with that Tom Cruise uh, mummy. mummy. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The mummy was t- tied to that. With that uh, sea monster, the shape of water, right? Were they tied together? Was that part of it, or no? No, I think that. I honestly think that the shape of water is Guillermo del Toro's response to not being able to do uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Shut up. Oh, that would make sense. It's pretty close to what that movie, yeah. I, like. Especially the way he looks. Is I was like, gonna say the, the monster itself is, is kind of an updated Black Lagoon yeah. creature, anyway. Yeah. It is, so is Abe Sapien. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's not like. But no, I guess there was no real copyright on that sort of creature. I kind of came from like H.P. Lovecraft and mythology and shit. Yeah. I mean, that's some pretty old shit, you know, the monster from the deep, the merman, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. There was a sequel to the original called Revenge of the Creature. It was in three day. And, like, my town went fucking ape shit, heading to Burger King, 
to get, you know, you get your meal and then you get the glasses get the and glasses. then you turn on channel right. 11. Yeah. And you get to watch it. I don't know if you were born yet or you no. were really young when that no, happened. No, I don't remember that shit. That's and you had to adjust your TV. You had to put your glasses on and adjust your TV. So before the broadcast, they, I guess they'd show color bars to... You know, to adjust your whatever. Sometimes they would announce in the 3D. Yeah, I, the tint, I know what the knobs are and yeah. I know what they do. I just don't know what they're called. But anyway. Yeah. Because I used to do bars and tone all the time. <laughs> it was busy work in television. Do bars and tone on some tapes. So you could watch 3D uh, movies at home, like on your home television. Yeah, but it was it was the blue and the red. Blue, yeah. It was the old fashioned. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if you had any, any kind of color blindness or. It was no go, but yeah, it was no a, it was a big deal in Newton because it was exciting. It was something to do. You go out to dinner, you come home, you watch this movie, and it was pretty good for I mean for a movie of its time. Like, yeah, the three D was pretty good. I mean, he eats a he eats a, a, a bird in a waterfowl like in the first in the first act. It's crazy. Nice. And, and but the three D was also very very much shoved down your throat. You yeah, it's like, it's like they're in the camera like, yeah. like trying and then like. But isn't that what it's supposed to be? No. No. It's supposed it's supposed to immerse you into the into okay. the world. Where where the there was a the Three Stooges th- movie that did that, uh, a three D one, and, and it was just constantly mo right punching the camera and shit. Yeah, exactly. Three I mean, D is like uh, just a thing that comes in and out of style, and I think it was just in style then. They just knew they were gonna make. No, but there's two different ways they do it too. Because sometimes they'll shoot a movie with a three D camera, camera rig, which is the best stars. way to do it. Yeah. Like I saw um, Piranha in 3D, the okay. yeah. remake awesome. of Piranha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Big Rains. It was yeah. fucking awesome. It was great. It was like they use, you know, 3D to show you the depth of water and like a girl swimming and these fucking things, yeah. you know, just ravager. It's fucking great. Yeah. Um, like Friday the Thirteenth in 3D is like the opposite. It's like oh, a rake falls into the camera. Right. And exactly. Like, yes. Yeah. It's like why? Like he, no other movie would ever have yeah, the, fucking the, nonsense. The greatest like cinematic crime of all time, Jaws 3D. Oh, I oh, know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Up. Awful. It's fantastic. <laughs> the shark looks so bad. And and uh, going going through the glass when he breaks through the. Oh my oh, god! Yeah. He's just, so he's bad. Just coming, he's just coming towards the camera. Just coming. And it doesn't. He's not even getting any bigger. He's just come, like. Like swimming <laughs> towards the camera, and all of a sudden the glass breaks and comes towards the camera. Like, look, he came through to you. That was hard. Yeah, they yeah, did. Wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it, wait for it. Here it comes. And then, uh, like, in the first act, there's an arm that sort of floats, like, by your face. Right. And, uh, but. No, I, I, I think they had a bunch of hacks in the sequel, so there's Jaws. The, the, best, yeah. the best use of 3D that I've seen so far, I mean, obviously, Avatar. Was, oh, was like yeah. the pioneer of, of that whole uh, technology, but um, Life of Pi. Yeah. Did you see anybody see Life of Pi? No, I saw it, but I didn't that's the I'm, I'm floating in a in a boat and with, with, with a tiger. tiger and a, yes. I saw it's, 90% it's, of that movie. Yeah. It, it, oh, so okay. So, I missed the beginning. You missed the beginning. So what did you think of it? It was a, it was a beautiful film. Was, I love that actor. That's that Slumdog Millionaire guy. He's right. great. He's and, very compelling. You need a good compelling actor to carry the movie because you're crazy. It's all him. all in the boat. Yeah. Exactly. It's all him. But the way it was shot it's as well, bad. I mean, the, the, it was just cinematically unbelievable. So, um, that's, I mean, that's, it, that's it's, it's, it's a beautiful film. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and the, the colors are just so vivid the way they shot it. It's just so beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's it, it deserved to get all the Oscar nods it did. Um, I just, I need to see the, the very beginning. But I think, I don't know watched it, but I just caught it from the end, but it was so compelling, I, it didn't matter. Because I kind of knew what. what See, I saw it in the theater with the the 3D in the theater. Are we frozen? (laughs) No, I don't think so. Okay. (laughs) Um, Hello. Yeah, I saw it in the theater with the 3D glasses, and seeing it in the theater was just unbelievable because, you know, big screen. Right. A lot, a lot of times you don't need the 3D. You know, the movies nowadays are, are are done in 3D, like like Paul was saying, is uh, it, it's it's made 3D after the fact. Yeah. So you don't really need. It. I thought Doctor Strange was going to be fantastic in 3D. Yeah. So that's, it, it was. It, I was like, I, I could well, I could watch this in, in regular. I, I, I saw the, the animated movie Spider Man into the Spider Verse in 3D, mm-hmm. and that was fucking wicked, because he was like. 
learning, so he's like fucking up, and he's like running his yeah. traffic, and the cars are coming everywhere, see, and then he's up again, really and he's all over the place. And that whole thing about Spider-Man being all over the place is kind of exciting to me. But to see that in 3D really added an extra element. Mm -hmm. And since they had several different Spider-Man characters going through there, and the, through the course of the movie, it was even cooler later on. I don't know if anybody saw that yet. I think it's on I saw it. Now. I thought it was meh. Really? I, I just thought it was I meh. I thought it was a moving the, story. It was captivating. I, I um, for the kids. They, they, I don't know. They, they sort of like, you know, jerked off all over the source material. Oh, I don't yeah. really care about that. I think it's a reimagining. I know, and I try to take it as a well, different universe, yada, 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 but, I mean, I, I just thought the execution would... It, it was geared way too much towards kids. So, well, you, yeah. so the source material, if you're, if you're a fan of the source material of Spider-Man, what do you think of the new Tom Holland Spider-Man movies? Oh, yeah. They're okay. They're close to the dick out. Are they? I don't think they're close. I mean, the way Peter acts okay. being a little kid, the costume looked like the dick out uh, I understand Spider that. What about Aunt May? All right, so they... They modernize her to the MCU. I mean, you got to make it into real life. Mm -hmm. Somebody Aunt May's age nowadays would be hip and attractive. I figured out what the deal was. I heard what the deal was between Marvel and Sony. That explains why they made all those fucking crazy changes like that. Yeah. Why they made Aunt May hot. Why they made um, MJ. What's her name? Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah. She's not a redhead and all that bullshit. Right. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff, and it's because. If the Spider-Man movie doesn't make a billion dollars, the rights revert back to Sony. They have that Venom universe. They're going to put Spider-Man in their universe. Right. But they can't use Marissa Tomei as Aunt May. They can't use Zendaya as MJ. So they're going to go for the more like traditional old lady Aunt May and the redhead and the whole nine. Do they get Tom Holland or? They get Tom Holland. Yeah. Okay. But they don't get they don't get him in like the Iron Spider suit. They don't get any of that shit. They don't get any of the Marvel shit. Spider-Man fails. And that's how, like, Sony's going to hold on to their rights forever. For all these years, they were making, like, a Spider-Man movie every couple of years to keep the rights. Yes. Spider-Man yes. 3. Now, they they don't have to make a Spider-Man movie. They can make Morbius. They can make Venom. They can make all these other movies that are based around the Spider-Man universe. universe. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years did I ever think we'd have a fucking Venom movie without Spider-Man in it. Like, right, this right. is some weird... Yeah, that right. seemed odd, because, I mean, Venom was basically like a, a he, different persona of Spider-Man. Right, yeah, exactly. On webs and all that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I didn't, you know, I didn't even like the fact when the comic books made him into a hero. He was so popular they had to make him into a hero. They do that. They did that with wrestlers in the WWF. Like Jake the Snake was a bad guy, and he became a good guy. Well, they, that, that's different though. WWF. They, they, I don't know. There's WWE. a lot of similarities between comic book storylines and, and wrestling stuff. You, know, you think really so? Can. Especially in the cartoony days of the the 80s, early 90s. Like WWF. Lobo. Like, yeah. Didn't he start off as like a kind of a bad guy? He's an anti-hero. Yeah. What, what they call in the role-playing uh, world chaotic neutral. Uh, uh, I think which means so. like, eh, I mean, Lobo's a merc. I mean, if you pay him, he'll do whatever. I love the Lobo like comics. Deadpool's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I think wrestling's a little different because you get an actual live reaction to it, though. Sure. So like the fans sometimes. I'm just saying, just pure, pure like some of the storylines are just sort of sort of the moves that you make. It's like this character's popular. We're going to give him his own book, and we're going to make him a yeah. Guy. You know. So this character's really Jake the Snake. He's really popular. Let's make him a good guy. That's not storytelling. That's business. But no, Jake the Snake when he get, when he got popular, well, they made him a good guy. He's the storytelling. They didn't make Jake the Snake a good guy, guy because they just wanted to make him. a good guy he his character never changed the fans just cheered him like Roddy Roddy Piper the fans just cheered him because they fucking they just like him right but well, he started like, going after bad guys though but no, Piper used to go after Hogan yeah Hogan was the fucking the, he was the face he was the, the guy yeah. yeah he was the baby but there even was, though he always did heel shit which I always thought was funny like he always Hogan? cheated yeah Hogan would fucking rake the eyes. He would yeah. use a chair. Like, it's like, oh yeah, he's the good guy we're cheering for. But like, what is why? But he's doing, yeah. he's doing the bad guy thing. Yeah. Do you remember? Okay, so for some dumb reason, well, um, the the uh, the Mountie had the Intercontinental Belt, and then uh, Piper won it in some event that nobody saw, and they had to show footage of it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it was Bret Hart versus Roddy Piper. And it was kind of cool because you had kind of like two 
Yeah. Because at that point, Bret Hart was becoming a good That's guy. a better match than Bret Hart versus the Mountie. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the Mountie was a good wrestler. He was in a tag team. Early. Dude, his tag team partner now, like yeah. from back then, the guy, uh, what, they were the Rougeau brothers or something? Yeah, the Rougeau brothers. Fabulous Rougeau brothers. Pierre, Pierre Carl Ouellette is like his tag team partner. Uh huh. That guy flies. He's still wrestling. Dude. Guy. That motherfucker is an animal. He takes bumps like off the top rope, like onto the fl- onto a concrete fucking floor. Really? He does suicide dives. He's about three hundred pounds and in the best shape of his entire career. I never, I tweet like at him all the time. Oh, is he the guy? Is he the fat guy that tried to do that one move and and it didn't work? You were talking about in a wrestling episode. He. No, that was probably Brock Lesnar trying to do that fucking. Oh, okay. Thing. But, but no, PCO is like. He, he became this character, the French-Canadian Frankenstein, and he has this manager that, like, electrocutes him with a car battery. <laughs> and he fucking does, like, all these tests of strength. Like, he'll just, like, lift up a fucking car and, like, do all this crazy shit. And he was shit. a fabulous Rougeau brother. Yeah. In the 80s. Yeah. So he was probably, what, 25 in, in those days? Yeah, that was, like, his early days. So, and wow. that was, what, th- oh, my God, he's in his 50s now. He's in his 50s, yeah. And still doing it. And he's, he's that's right. I mean, the Rougeau brothers were really, really exciting back in the day because they would do the high flying moves. Mm. He's unbelievable. He still is a moonsault at 300 pounds at that age. That's wow. that's insane. It, that's insane. Yeah, he's immortal. Yes, right. Heck with Nicolas Cage, he's immortal. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Is um is Willie Nelson one of you guys? Willie Nelson? No. Now, Willie, Willie's, Willie's not one of us yet. <laughs> yeah. He's working on it really tough, though. Mm-hmm. Which brings yeah. to the next question. Ah. Do, do zombies smoke weed? Well, we don't have to worry about lung cancer or any kind of uh, negative effects. The problem, though... What about is, the positive effects? Do they work to That's the yeah, problem, I mean, because our brain activity is, is very uh, limited anyway. So smoking pot doesn't really do anything... Uh, to stimulate what brain cells we have. Does it do bring that. us down to your or level or up to your level when we're? I don't. I don't believe so. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I never partook, partook when I was alive. Because we're so. kind of like zombies when we are zombies. Yeah. Too much pogs. That would be a great horror movie. Like some bad weeds going around and it's turning kids into zombies. I wanted zombies. to do that for a long time. Actually, I have a theory about zombies. I want to see if you correct. Go for it. I believe. Based on every film that I've seen, mm. there are three kinds of zombies. Okay. There are ones that are brought upon mystical. We talked about that with the Deadites and the Necronomicon. Mm-hmm. Right. There is um, the biological, which is a virus, virus which right. is the most common. The zombie survival guide, basically. Uh, did you read the zombie film? Yes. yes. One of the best zombie books ever. Everybody, get it. It's great. Um, now he knows all the tricks. Yeah. Right? I have the book, man. I mean, come on. It's got signs. Absolutely. So he knows to stay away from the guys wearing the chainmail uh, diving suits because you can't bite through You can't bite through right. Um So anyway, that was one of the best things in the book. So <laughs> the biological, so it's a virus. But then there's there was, a, there was a zombie film where it was brought on chemically with nuclear waste in the 1980s. Uh, and, and I guess reanimated to some extent. Okay. So... So, is that true? Is there three different classes of zombies? And how do you guys interact with one another, if that is true? So, like, do the biological ones hate the chemical ones, and do the chemical ones hate the mystical ones, or the mystical ones just stupid, mindless anyway, and aren't much for conversation? Well, I mean, I I hate to burst your bubble. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. But, you know, the... the, Uh, It's just a theory. uh, Obviously, obviously, and I I, I appreciate the research that you've gone into this, but uh, the, the the whole chemical... Nuclear waste thing, not not a, a zombie thing. It, okay, it is not a zombie thing. Uh, the, you just get cancer. The the, the virus <laughs> uh, is definitely one, and uh, the, but the mystical part is more of like um, so you're summoning the dead and 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 you're and you're, you're making them do things at, of your will. Right. So you have to animate the uh, us somehow. And I believe what I believe is, and, and, and I've only heard this from, from a couple other zombie friends of mine. But um, I, what I believe is the mystical part of it that they're actually um, magically uh, putting the, the virus onto those zombies. Okay, you see. So it's all th- those two are connected. Can and you, as wait far a minute, as you get a, a mystical virus, just somebody could mystically put. Is it any virus? No, well, I, I don't know. Don't bang a hypnotist or a tarot card reader at the Jersey Shore. 
That's how you'll get it. At the Jersey Shore? Specifically? Specifically at the Jersey Shore. Like a bang, a hypnotist anywhere else? Just not the Jersey Shore? <laughs> I don't know about hypnotist. I think I said the wrong the, thing. The, the, I'm the uh, dumb one. You missed one the tar- kind of zombie. The, the tarot card reader with three what, nipples. What kind of zombie did I miss? Stay away from the tarot card reader with three nipples. Um, did you ever see the serpent in the rainbow? That's like the real kind of stuff. That's more, that sounds that's like a, a, a sushi that's dish. That holy that's what you do, and that is that is that but is. That's what the Bokor does. That's makes not, zombies to do his bidding. That those are those are not actual zombies. Not actual zombies. No, not not actual first. zombies. Not. No. <laughs> those are French. No. no. Everybody, no. Just hey, to fill speaking of that. stuff that's back from the dead, you hear who's playing the garden? <gasps> oh yeah. We all know. Oh, oh, oh. The Misfits. Misfits, yeah. The yeah. Misfits are playing the garden. We knew that the play garden. again. We knew that with, was going to happen. With the Damned and Rancid. That's a good lineup. Line it's a, a good great lineup. Line 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 tickets are going to be maxed out. How much are tickets? I don't even know. Have they gone on sale yet? No, they went on sale. The pre-sale was this week. Yeah, but like, they went on I saw somebody on Facebook was trying to get in, and they were like 2,000 people ahead of, ahead of this person. Wow. That is and, fucking uh, crazy. So yeah, like I'm not even gonna bother. Maybe I'll try to get it in the second hand market if I can. But I don't know. It'd be cool to see the dam. But Ranson always puts I'll on tell you show. what your best I, bet is: day of, day of. Just, just you, just you'll find one of those guys who has the like stub tickets or like walk yeah, around. You could find them online for like real cheap. Day of, if it's if it's not sold out and people are trying to, or if it is sold out and people are trying to get rid of them, yeah, second hand market. Like a ticket that might have been two hundred dollars for like an eighty dollar ticket will be like a hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Like yeah, uh, or, yeah. Like they'll, they'll drop it. Like I know people that got in for like sixty bucks. Holy shit! To see the fucking to see him in uh, Newark. So, uh, uh, but I think the bucks. Garden too is also a bigger event. Like yeah, it might very well sell out. I don't think the Misfit show at Prudential was actually a sellout. Everybody thought they were getting priced out, so everybody backed off. But there's uh, a lot of people there, though. I don't know. I wanted them to play the Wonder Bar with the Bad Hormones uh, opening. That was that was like my. Dream. Oh, that was my favorite thing was seeing people's reactions to like, oh, the Misfits are playing the Garden. Oh, I was holding out hope they would play Asbury Park. It's like, where the fuck in Asbury Park are you going to put that? <laughs> the convention center can hold them. No, but that's... <clears throat> put them on the beach. They're playing, like, stadiums. Like, why the yeah. fuck would they go play Asbury Park? That's what I mean. Because they, it's Jersey, and they're a Jersey fan. They want to rig in the dough. And, and, and Asbury Park has... There's, there's sort of a... They know it's the time. People, Park. people, well, people are they're, of a certain they're, age are going to shell out for that to try to regain their youth. Yeah, you know who it is that wants them to play fucking Starland Barham? Is all the pay-to-play bands that always <laughs> opened for the shitty Misfits with Jerry uh, for all these years? Like, yeah, we opened for the Misfits. It's like, ah, no, you didn't. Look now, like, yeah, you know, they that, play at PNC. They're from Jersey. Yeah, they yeah, did well, they did. Well, they did no, the PNC Art Center, Art Center. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, they Not did the Center. Yeah, New York, but yeah. Yeah. you're I thinking of PVC. It's a whole different. Yeah, thing. yeah. I, I think it's like one of those things. I don't think they want to play outside. Like I think they're fucking old. They like air conditioning. Like they like a stadium show. Uh, I, mean, I guess if they do play outside, it's usually an amphitheater in California where there's no humidity instead of like here. Yeah, they did play outside there, but like. I don't know, I couldn't see them playing. Yeah, with, with the makeup and everything, yeah. I mean, did they wear the full makeup on the at the at the Prudential Center? Or? Yeah, they always wear that shit. I mean, Glenn was in makeup, too? No, he never wears it. He, he never hardly wore it back in the day. I don't know. Back in the Sam Hain days, he was pretty made up. Yeah, Sam Hain days. Not too much in the Misfits, though. Like, Misfits. I've seen pictures where he, he's kind of a little bit, but not crazy. Uh, not like Michael Graves did in okay. the nineties with the skeleton fucking face. Oh yeah, yeah. And well, that, that was a bit over the top, but I think I think the the brand needed that at the time. Yeah. And you know who wants to wear all that makeup in hundred degree weather? Yeah, nobody. You know, in with lights on you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but nobody wants. Why that. would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? That's who would do that? Crazy people would do that. I have some predictions. I mean, if it's in the garden, there's somebody's gonna show up and be a special guest. Somebody famous is gonna do it. Okay. Whether it's a because everybody wow. loves them. Like, I don't know, Dutch from Guns N' Roses, maybe? No, they don't give a shit about anybody famous showing or, or, up. Or uh, fucking like um, Dave Grohl shows up and plays drums with them. No, or, no, I think that will happen. Lenny Kravitz. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think there's like anybody that. like... Definitely not like Jeff McKagan is a huge Misfits fan. I don't think there's anybody that matters that much, though. Like, to them. I to mean, them. Yeah, like, I don't think they would give a fuck if Dave Grohl wanted to play drums. Like, I think Danzig would be like, nah, fuck you. Like... 
Who would say no to Dave Grohl playing? Danzig. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's, he's crazy. He don't give a fuck. Yeah. But Henry Rollins. Yeah, if, if anything, Henry Rollins coming up to do 138 would be like that would that would be where my money goes. I, I was trying to think of somebody like who would be a person that would come up there with, with them. Like it would have to be Rollins. It couldn't be fucking. Because Guns N' Roses covered Attitude. Mm-hmm. I know, but I don't. But I don't think the Misfits gives a shit. Gun, yeah, but they, but they had the respect for the Misfits. I think if, the Misfits have the same respect back. You know what I was saying? I don't know. know. It's yeah. like somebody like Hetfield, but. Conversely, oh yeah, Hetfield Danzig will just go up with Metallica and do Misfits songs all the right. same. So yeah. I don't think Hetfield would show up to a Misfits show and like come out and sing back up. Yeah, he's busy. He's got to take his daughter to ballet class. Yeah. And buy polo shirts. <laughs> he's like a crazy buy Christian, polo shirts. too, I heard. God, oh, it uh, happens with, with a lot of alcohol. I heard he's like really into Christianity now. Yeah. That, uh, you give yourself to a higher power to get off the booze, and that's what happens. I, the way I always see it is I used to be all fucked up on drugs. Now I'm all fucked up on God. And so, there's some sort yeah, of guilt thing going on there, too. The drugs that physically kill you. Uh, right. God just kills your spirit, you know? Is he supposed to create your spirit? He can, so you put you, he can make you into a pillar of salt. I mean, what are you talking about? It's, it's a whole chemical thing that... Well, did you meet God before you thing? became a zombie? Like, Did I meet God? Yeah. What, did he send you back? Well, did you just meet St. Peter? I'm just, I'm, uh, you know what? I might not have, I might not have lived the best life. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Nice. Uh, so, nice. no, I, I didn't get to meet any of those guys. Okay. I met a whole bunch of different guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Azrael, Beelzebub. Yeah. And uh, nice. Lucifer. Satan. Beals, he likes to be called Beals. Beals? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Nice. Did, did I miss any devil names? I guess, was Sam Hain a devil name? No. Yeah. Or was that just, I don't know. Oh, uh, no. Um, Mephistopheles? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's the one. I knew I missed one that was band related. Old Scrap. So where can there we was... see you zombie Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, <laughs> then. This, this, this is the show. Well, uh, you can, you can um, go to uh, burnbraymansion.com, which is That's on, up on the, the screen Ooh, right uh, there. podcast there. Nice. And uh, I will be lurking in the shadows at Dark Forest. Um, we, we have uh, Halloween shows in October. Nice. And we do murder mysteries all year round. Um, so you can go to Burn Bray Mansion to see all the happenings for that. Uh, darkforest.com and, ha- and homicidetheater.com for the, uh, for the for the Halloween and the murder mysteries. And um, and you can also find me, Harlow the Zombie, uh, occasionally on TikTok at, um, at Film Phantom. Film Phantom on Film TikTok. Phantom we on gotta TikTok. we gotta check out TikTok, guys. I want to check out Homicide Theater. That sounds like fun. Homicide uh, Theater. Homicide Theater. I have mystery. been to the Burn Bray uh, Murder Mystery. I had a good time. Uh, In my family, Homicide, Homicide Theater was we're never gonna speak with this again. Grab that shovel. So. Oh, and by the way, Burn Bray Mansion uh, is an actual bed and breakfast, nice. and it is an actual haunted. Bed and breakfast. Ooh. There have been there have been all, all the all the big ghost uh, investigators, ghost hunters, and and um, Chip, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, they, they, they've all been up there and and done shows at the and, murder. And mansion. if you stay over, you can just like hang around a fire pit and just hang out with the cast from the murder mystery. That's right. Just, like, drink That's right. And we drink and, and we and we, uh, That's we, awesome. we talk tell stories and. Um, you know, hey, maybe you see a ghost. The cast was, was fantastic. They were great. The so was everybody great. go to Burn Bray Mansion this time. Burn Bray Mansion. BurnBrayMansion.com. Yeah. Nice. I nice. think on that note, we are... Should we do an asshole of the week? We can do an asshole of the week. We should get the hell out of here. Okay. Yeah. Who's the asshole of the week? Um, my asshole of the week um, is my boss for yelling at me for stuff that wasn't my fault. No. Oh. Because... All of a sudden, we have to test a website, and I don't know anything about testing websites, and it has to be done now, and you gotta do it right. And I hate when people, like, who are your boss, just dump shit on you, and you just gotta figure it out, man. You're my asshole of the week for not knowing how the website works. Well, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it. Well, it's like you have to figure out all the back end stuff, and, like, how to sign up things, and edit things, yeah. and all this other shit. It's never dull. No. 
But your, I figured it out. Who's your asshole of the week? Uh, Richard Bezos with this Prime Week bullshit and the yeah. horror factory conditions and the bullshit they're putting people through Ooh. just to earn a buck. And uh, he's got $13 billion. And he won't pay his employees? Fuck yeah. But at the same time, wow, I can save money on a fire stick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 14 bucks. Go to Amazon.com, get your fire stick. <laughs> but, like, you know, I thought you'd be, you know, a, like, yo, know, working class. No, you know what? I guy. fucking hate unions. <laughs> okay. Why do you hate unions? I've been dying because to Because when I was a state employee, oh my god, they just lower the standards of, like, shit that people should get fired for. The union's like, oh, you can't fire this guy. He's in the union. Just give him something else to do at, <laughs> at his fucking yearly. At his, at his uh, monthly pay, like there are issues with unions; they get corrupt like anything else. Like oh most things God. start out with the best of intentions and then die. But the thing is, um, I don't. What I are you speaking to the fan that sound more like Darth Vader? Yes, mm-hmm. Harlan, I am your father. Um, no, no, no. So I was just sweating. Um, what I hate about unions is like people get, you know, paid to show up, and it's it's based on seniority and not what you put in. Yeah, exactly. That's something that needs to be changed in unions, but I really do think that... No, that's... How many fucking ivory That's called the rest of everywhere else that you ever work, is how hard you work, is how, you know, how they compensate. But that doesn't always work that way. And favoritism plays in. Luck plays a factor. There's so many factors. What I'm getting at is, is why does Richard Bezos need $13 million and, you know, billion dollars, and then, like, you know, there are people that can't eat. Or people going bankrupt for fucking, you know... Because he's a Bond villain, dude. Yeah. yeah. And he wants $14 billion. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, how much... Can't we put a cap on fucking capitalism? There's a huge divide right now. That should be on a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put a cap on capitalism. Cap. Uh, those yeah. t-shirts are now available at sweetjimmy.com. There you go. You know, like, the minimum wage? There has been um, some economists that have uh, said we should have a maximum wage... And then they take your money and reinvest it into programs for mm. people who are downtrodden. So that's not a new idea. Um, no. But, but the thing is, in this country, country. I mean, you know the, new, is, the new arms race is is like how rich your country is and how well the stocks are doing. And now they're like nickel and dime in us common folk. So some asshole can say our country's strong. Fuck that. No. It and you got you got these man. millionaires like Hannity fucking. You know, supporting the billionaires and keeping us distracted and divided. I don't think it's not Hannity, right versus left. It's rich versus poor. I don't even know if Hannity's a millionaire. I, I, he's worth thirty-six million dollars. Is he really? Jesus wow. Christ! Wow. I'm paying him. But uh, no, the the way you look at it though, is you, if you start taking people's fucking, you put a maximum wage, you start taking people's money. The people that make that money are just gonna go make it elsewhere. They're gonna leave and go fucking open up shops somewhere else. Fine, then somebody else can. Take their place. Nobody's nobody's I don't, place. I, I, I don't think you can change a fundamental way uh, something has been run for. So, so you're super capitalist. You don't strike me as super. Am I super capitalist? I don't Haven't know. Have you seen his cape? He is super capitalist. Yeah. No, like I don't know. When it comes to like my art and shit, like I really don't care about making a buck. I have a job for a living, like. Mm. I do my my art because it's like fun and it's and something to do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, asking for a fucking handout. I'm no. just saying like things should. I just think there's there needs to be a slight redistribution of the wealth because I mean, there's just there's there's haves and have nots now. The middle class is disappearing, and I that's mean, a problem. I see a lot of people like on like Facebook and stuff that are raising money for like a broken leg and stuff like that. Like, exactly. In other countries, you don't have to pay for that. Like you're taken care of because. We live in a society, you know? And, you know, and meanwhile, like, people, people are bankrupt if you fucking get cancer and shit. Well, like, it's like, the it's two, look, people are paying medical bills for things that are deemed medically unnecessary when the thing that's deemed medically unnecessary caught the fucking problem in the first place. Right. And that's, that's just bullshit. But, like, Sweden doesn't have a problem like this, right? Like, they have, like, a good, like, medical system. Yeah. They also have... Yeah, all the weird white countries have that, yeah. They're they're a tiny little country with, like, no fucking people in it. So, it's pretty easy for them to figure out how to do that amongst... You just think there's too many people here? There's too many fucking people Um, here. Every other major country in the world, including Russia and China, have universal health care. 
I had universal health care when I worked in South Korea. These glasses here cost me $200. In Korea, they cost you $15. So explain that to me. One of the most overpopulated countries in the world. I don't, I don't trust China or Russia to do anything. He's saying every so Western European country, every major fucking country. It's like, he speaks. If, 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 if Paul is saying that there's too many people in the world. He's not a capitalist. Right. He's a Thanoist. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there you go. So, you all right, gauntlet? which one of us gets killed in the snap? <laughs> Wait, what? If he has the gauntlet and he snaps, which he one of us choose? Shoes? I don't choose. He just snaps and half the people are gone. You yeah, can right. choose. He chose not He, he chose not to do so. Oh, be quiet, you chubby suck up. Wow. <laughs> It's please save me, Bob. I'm just. I know how to do things, and I'm your mentor. Oh, you're, you're my mentor. mentor. You're my mentor. Oh yeah, that's that's just yeah. We just, <laughs> he just mentors the fuck out of me in the back room. <laughs> Who's your asshole of the week, friend? <laughs> Can it be Phil? <laughs> my asshole of the week is um, uh, Ted the Greenskeeper. Uh, he was digging a grave next to mine, put all the dirt on top, so it took me twice as long to get, actually get here today because I had to get through two, two uh, things of, of uh, six feet of dirt instead of just uh, 12 feet of dirt instead of just six. Wow. So, You're in my Ted, car, Ted the Greenskeeper. Uh, uh, when, when, when our gas picks an asshole of the week, mm-hmm. and if it's somebody that's close by, we beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> let's go, guys. We don't say that. Let's, on let's go. Well, yeah, we said that. We don't no, beat the fuck we, out we, of him. We, 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 we don't beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, hey, shut it down. It's over. Love you guys. Be good. Bye. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our presentation of Cult of Contempt podcast. If you have any questions or comments, or want to hear your band on the show, just write us at Cult of Contempt podcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to see back episodes of the show, youtube.com backslash plan 10 studios. Cultofcontempt.org or right here on Facebook, Cult of Content Network. Even check us out on Instagram at Cult of Content Podcast. You want to reach Paul? It's at Paul Mauld on Twitter and Instagram and Paul of the Living Dead on Facebook.com. Phil Perry, the writer on Instagram and his Facebook fan page at Phil Perry, the writer. I'm Jim Cook at Jim Cook on Facebook or Jim Cook voice actor on Facebook. You want to get a hold of me directly, jcookvoice at yahoo.com. On behalf of Paul and Phil, I want to thank you for listening. We'll see you next week at 8.15. I'm Jim Cook. Transmission out. Stay by for contact. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of Cult of Contempt podcast. If you have any questions or comments, or want to hear your band.